भागवत गीता एज इट इज एंड वी आर ऑन चैप्टर इलेवन प्रभु जी चैप्टर इलेवन इज द यूनिवर्सल फोम एंड टूडे वी आर रीच टेक्स फिफ्टी टू प्रभु जी so uh, prabhu ji how would you like us to continue we usually read the text word to word translation and purport yes that's fine yeah prabhu ji the purport is quite uh, long today so if you want to take part uh, bits and pieces we can do that we can read no, a little we'll, we'll read the whole thing okay prabhu ji thank you okay prabhu ji dhanwat pranam uh hi on behalf of everybody on this group prabhu ji we offer our humble obeisances thank you prabhu ji for your time and your mentorship okay so we'll start with the um, uh reading of the text shashwin are you able to read the text we'll read it just once today yes hari krishna hari krishna shri bhagavan uvacha दर्शन थैंक यू शाश्वी कुमार प्रभु जी काइंडली डू दर्ड टू वर्ड हरे कृष्णा श्री भगवान वाच द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड गेट सेट सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड टू गेट सेट सुदूरदर्शम सुदूरदर्शम वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू सी वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू सी इदम 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 दिस रूपम रूपम ओम ओम कृष्णवानसी कृष्णवानसी as you have seen as you have seen yet yet which which mama mama of mine of mine deva ha deva ha the demigods the demigods abi abi also also as yet as yet this rubasya rubasya om om nityam nityam eternally eternally dasana kan krishna darshana kankshina ha aspiring to see aspiring to see hare krishna hare krishna is eldoret josh prabhu ji are you there is kon eldoret hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji is it possible for you to read the translation prabhu ji sorry i was away text which text text 52 prabhu ji translation it's translation you on your video it's 
Hare Krishna Prabhuji, kindly read the translation. The Supreme Personality of God and say, My dear Arjuna, this form of my, this form of mind you are now see is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form, which is so dear. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, the purport uh, is quite long and we'll have three readers. We can start with Avinash Prabhuji. Can you read um, some half of it and then Raj Kishori Mata, she can continue and then I can end it. Prabhuji? Okay, I'll, I'll read the first paragraph and somebody can continue with the second. Yes, yes, yes. Prabhuji. Okay, purport okay. by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. In the 48th verse of this chapter, Lord Krishna concluded revealing his universal form and informed Arjun that this form is not possible to be seen by so many pious activities, sacrifices, etc. Now, hear the word Sudarshanam is used, indicating that Krishna's two handed form is still more confidential. One may not, one may be able to see the universal form of Krishna by adding a little tinge of devotional service to various activities like penances, Vedic study, and philosophical speculation. It may be possible, but without a tinge of bhakti, one cannot see. That has already been explained. Still, Beyond that universal form, the form of Krishna with two hands is still more difficult to see. Even for demigods like Brahma, O, and Lord Shiva, they desire to see him. And we have evidence of, in the Srimad Bhagavatam that he was supposed to be in the womb of the, his mother Devaki. All the demigods from heaven came to see the marvel of Krishna and they offered nice prayers to the Lord, although he was not at that time visible to them. They waited to see him. A foolish person may deride him, thinking him an ordinary person, and may offer respect not to him, but to the impersonal something within him. But these are all nonsensical postures. Krishna in his two-armed form is actually desired to be seen by demigods like Brahma and Shiva. Do you want me to continue or? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I, I think Raj Kishori Mataji can continue. Mataji, can you continue? Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tell me when to stop, okay? Mataji, you stop whenever and I will continue. Okay. In Bhagavad Gita 9.11, it is also confirmed, Avajananti Mamamura Manushim Tanu Ashrita. He is not visible to the foolish persons who deride him. Krishna's body is confirmed in the Brahma Samhita and confirmed by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita is completely spiritual and full of bliss and eternality. His body is never like a material body. But for some who make a study of Krishna by reading Bhagavad Gita or similar Vedic scriptures, Krishna is a problem for one using the material process. Krishna is considered to be a great historical personality and very learned philosopher, but he is an ordinary man. And even though he was so powerful, he had to accept a material body. Ultimately, they think that the absolute truth is impersonal. Therefore, they think that from his impersonal feature, he assumed a personal feature attached to the material nature. This is a materialistic calculation of the Supreme Lord. Another calculation is speculative. Those who are in search of knowledge also speculate on Krishna and consider him to be less important than the universal form of the Supreme. Thus, some think that the universal form of Krishna, which was manifested to Arjun, is more important than his personal form. According to them, the personal form of the Supreme is something imaginary. They believe that in the ultimate issue, the absolute truth is not a person. 
Shall I stop here? Okay, Mataji, thank you. Thank you. But the transcendental process is described in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter four, to hear about Krishna from authorities. That is actual Vedic process. And those who are actually in the Vedic line hear about Krishna from authority. And by repeated hearing about him, Krishna becomes dear. As we have several times discussed, Krishna is covered by his yoga maya potency. He is not to be seen or revealed to anyone and everyone. Only by one to whom he reveals himself can he be seen. This is confirmed in the Vedic literature. For one who is surrendered soul, the absolute truth can actually be understood. The transcendentalist, by continuous Krishna consciousness and by devotional service to Krishna, can have his spiritual eyes opened and can see Krishna by revelation. Such a revelation is not possible even for the demigods. Therefore, it is difficult even for the demigods to understand Krishna and the advanced demigods are always in the hope of seeing Krishna in his two-handed form. The conclusion is that although to see the universal form of Krishna is very, very difficult and not possible for anyone and everyone, it is still more difficult to understand his personal form as Shyamasundara. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Path Prabhuji, we have a lot of new devotees today. So, um, is it possible for you to introduce yes. uh, Prabhuji before we hand over to him? Hare Krishna, yes, yes. I also uh, thinking like that way. So, today we are so grateful and so this is a very special day today. We have among us His Grace uh, Sridharang Prabhuji, who is a very learned and advanced devotee in you. East Africa, even also Africa region. And he have a lot of uh, experience, a lot of uh, uh, devotion, austerity, everything. By profession, he was a chartered accountant, but he quit his job. He is schooling in a Vrindavan in India Gurukul. Also, he many days schooling in UK. After that, he joined full time as a Brahmachari and spread Krishna consciousness uh, everywhere. He also served many years many days in a Juhu temple in India, Mumbai. Also, he uh, spread Krishna courses in South Africa, visiting also there. He has a lot of experience, also very deep knowledge in Vedic scriptures like Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and all the, the Acharyas written the Vedic scriptures. Also conducted Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Shastri class, Bhakti Vaibhava class. He is a very learned. And we know everyone, also we are so grateful today, although he is busy, busy all the time, but I request him, please Prabhu, you give us one day. And he is a very wise, kind heart, he accepts my request and he giving permission today, he is allowing today to come here and we are so fortunate today to hear from Sri Goranga Prabhuji. Also Prabhuji told, <clears throat> he comes one in, once in a week. But we will communicate with him which day he will be free because all day he is giving the classes, seminars, shloka, and so many things. He is whole day is doing also the temple administration and everything because it's a big temple. So we are so fortunate uh, today among us, uh, His Grace Sri Goranga Prabhuji. So I also welcome all the devotees who joined here, different, different devotees in different parts. Also, thanks, welcome him. So now, we over to Sri Gauranga Prabhuji. We can see, uh, we can hear from him, and we have any doubt, we can ask questions. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Please accept our humble obeisances. Uh, now over to you. Hare Krishna. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Padre Prabhu. I think uh, the introduction was a bit uh, over the top. I'm just a student like all of you. Um, Learning never stops. 
this is your so greatness we we may be in different uh, aspects of learning but we are always learning so it's a pleasure to be with all of you and uh, today we are discussing shrimad bhagavad gita chapter 11 the universal form particularly text number 52 So I know you've already said the Mangala Charan prayers, but I will also just repeat a very short Mangala Charan, uh, just to help us get into the mood of trying to understand what Shri Prabhupada is saying in today's verse. Om Agyana Timiranda Sri Gyana Jana Shalakya Chakshana Milita Gina Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakalpatarubhyas Chakripa Sindhuvya Evacham सुदूरदर्शमदूपम दृष्टवान सियन मम The Supreme Personality of God had said, "My dear Arjuna, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form, which is so dear." So we have uh, this eleventh chapter, and you are coming towards the end of the eleventh chapter. So. i would like one of you to just answer one small question how many forms of the lord have appeared in this chapter so far up to today's verse yes get your mother you can team zoom to raise the hand so where yes. was the That's host please the lord prahlad has raised his hand okay Yeah. Um, I Allah. believe first of all is uh, the form that Arjuna saw with the transcendental eyes, and then the four-armed form, the the two-armed form. Yes. So we've already seen here up to today's verse, Arjuna has seen three different forms of the Lord. Now, the form that is spoken about in this particular verse is which one? of the three that prahlad mentioned uh, the universal form the gigantic universal form the four armed form and the two armed form which form is being referred to in this verse maybe someone from iskon eldoret can answer i see some two devotees there although i cannot see them so clearly prabhu ji kindly unmute we can't hear you Yes, Hare Krishna. Yes, please tell us which form is being referred to in today's verse. Okay, maybe someone to assist them. um yes avinash prabhu tell us hari krishna just the last sentence of this uh, um, purport by shri prabhu pad uh, yes it is uh, it is more still more difficult to understand his personal form as shama sundara so yes. that is the form he is talking about the two handed form yes the two armed form thank you for that right the two armed form of the lord is what arjuna is seeing in today's verse wasn't this the form that he was seeing in the beginning of the chapter yes, yes. it was so why did he want to see the universal form of the lord if this form is very dear and even demigods want to see it we see the word is being used is sudur darshan darshan means to see darshan when we come to the temple to take darshan means we come to see the lord so darshan means to see dur darshan no it's not a channel in india tv channel dur darshan means it's difficult to see do 
when you add do to a word, it becomes difficult, right? So dur darshan, dur labha. Labha means to acquire. Dur labha means very difficult to acquire. So dur darshan means to very difficult to see. And then not only is it dur darshan, not only is it difficult to see, it is su dur darshan. So su means even more difficult, extremely difficult, right? So you have bhadra, you have auspiciousness, you have su bhadra. When you add su, it means it's more auspicious. So su bhadra. Now here it's su dur darshan. So very, very difficult to see, extremely difficult to see. If you take difficult and you say more difficult and most difficult, so the most difficult you'll say su dur darshan. So if already Aruna was seeing this form, he was seeing this form at the beginning of the chapter. I saw Kirtika Mataji uh, nodding ahead. Yes, Arjuna was seeing this form before that he saw the universal form. Then why did he want to see the universal form? What is, what was the reason or what is the criteria or what is Arjuna's thought process, why did he want to see the universal form of the Lord? Those who are regular may be able to answer. And I'm going to request the host, Kirti Kamataji, you please, you, you know who is regular, who is not regular. I'm just seeing a bunch of names here. Uh, but maybe you can ask someone or you can answer yourself, yes. I, I, think, I think Braj Kishori Mataji is unmuted, so I'll let her, otherwise I can answer that question. Mataji, would you like to answer? Braj uh, yes, well, I think it's because Krishna described his vibhutis, his different forms. So Arjun decided, all these vibhutis, can I see put together? So he requested to see the universal form. Okay, yes. Kritika Mataji? Uh, I think, Prabhuji, um, uh, I agree with uh, uh, Mataji, but also uh, I think there was still one small doubt in uh, Arjuna's mind, and uh, he was probably feeling that um, uh, everybody, like the Lord had, he wanted to, Lord wanted to make a point that whatever is happening has already happened. So uh, he, he showed this form to see that everybody's in his mouth and being eaten up. So why are you lamenting? I mean, if you ha even have a small doubt anymore, um, uh, this uh, rupa, after seeing this rupa, that should go away. So well, what was Arjuna's doubt again, Mataji? Uh, that uh, he didn't want to fight. This was in the beginning, uh, that he didn't want to fight because all of them were his relatives and how can he do this uh, to his relatives and there'll be so many deaths and things like that. Okay. Good. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, uh, yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, by your permission, I just add something. When uh, in the 10th chapter, Krishna showed the opulence, he's telling this, this, this things, the beautiful things is from mine, and I am that one. Then uh, Arjun may be doubt. Arjun have no doubt, but uh, Krishna put him in Maya. So for the, our generation, for the next time, the people will not be thinking like that. Krishna is just like, telling, not showing anything. And uh, Arjun also think like that. He's just uh, my nephew, uh, he's my friend like that. We are eating, sitting together, doing that one. And he's not a welder too much. Then how he possess this one? He's just a common man in a human form like me. How he feeling like that? He have all the possess. So he requests to show you up, yourself. You can prove that one. This is the okay. uh, things that yes. I good, good, good attempt from all the devotees there. Yes, like um, I think Raj Kishori Mataji mentioned and Path Prem Prabhu also mentioned that the vibhutis were there. And although Arjuna asked, please tell me about your vibhutis, the Lord only mentioned a few of them, right? Few for the Lord, many for us. The whole tenth chapter was all covering Krishna's vibhutis. Vibhutis means opulences. Uh, but this actually is coming from the ninth chapter in the ninth chapter, Krishna showed how is he is in everything. He mentioned to Arjuna, I am in everything, but everything is not in me. Okay. And then he said, everything is in me, but I am not in them. 
so it's it's confusing and if you find it confusing then you're in the right place if you think you've understood then you're not understood right this krishna's opulence pasyami yogam aishwaryam right mat stani sarva bhutani pasyami yogam aishwaryam everything is in me and i am not in them and yet i am in everything but they are not in me so in this way arjuna to understand this lord krishna in the 10th chapter showed how he is in everything so those who have been regular what are some of the examples krishna is showing how he is in everything any one or two you know he spoke many but one or two will suffice so he is the taste of in water he is the uh, smell yes taste of the water was actually in the 7th chapter yes so i would say amongst the water what is he kritika mata ji answer amongst the bodies of water what so he is the supreme uh, uh, supreme viva ganga ganga he is the he is the most in whatever ocean, yes some people are shouting ocean so ocean. yes amongst the various bodies of water he is the ocean, ocean. amongst the immovable objects he is the himalaya or, or meru right amongst the mountains is the himalaya amongst the animals he is the lion so amongst oh. various various groups lord krishna is showing how he is in everything yeah, amongst the demons he is pralad pralad yes, yes. I, i expected pralad to shout himself there um, <laughs> <laughs> yes so amongst the demons he is pralad so he is showing himself in everything that's chapter 10 are we together up to that point yes i hope so you know on zoom it's very difficult to tell because everyone has their mics and videos off so you can't know what's happening behind the screens uh now in chapter 11 arjuna is seeing something different what is arjuna seeing in chapter 11 in chapter 11 he is seeing how everything is in krishna okay. are we getting that chapter 10 how krishna is in everything chapter 11 how everything is in krishna so arjuna he comes tam right he was in one place and he was seeing everything how all planets all demigods all living entities various manifestations of this universe how they are all in one place in one person the lord that is the universal form it is all encompassing everything that one can think of and even all that one cannot think of everything is in the universal form so Arjuna was already seeing the two armed form he asked to see the universal form one because from the ninth chapter krishna said how everything is in him so arjuna was wondering please you've shown me how you are in everything now show me how everything is in you that's one number two arjuna never had a doubt to the supremacy of lord krishna in the 10th chapter he already said param brahma param dhama pavitram paramam bhavam purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam ajam vibhum that you are the supreme you are the supreme destination you are the supreme abode you are the supreme personality and whatever you have said i accept i accept that you are the supreme personality of god arjuna never ever doubted the lord's supremacy now why did he ask them he asked because some people they would say oh but you know arjuna is a good friend of krishna and so friends usually exaggerate about their other friends right so just like pat prem prabhu was uh, introducing me and of course he he was doing it in a very nice humble service manner right but someone would can say oh pat prem prabhu you know because he knows me and so therefore he is saying a little bit things over the top right so 
Arjuna didn't want that to happen. That people go and say, oh, Arjuna was friend of Lord Krishna. So obviously he'll say, why will Arjuna say anything bad? Even if Krishna is not God, Arjuna will say, oh, you are God. Because they're friends. He will claim, yes, Krishna, you are the Supreme Personality of God. And because they're friends. So Arjuna said, no, I don't want them to rely on my word only. Of course, in the 10th chapter we read, Arjuna was saying, it's not me who is saying you are the Supreme. Even Asita, Devala, Vyasa, Narada, all these great saints are also saying. But people would still think, oh, no, no, no. They are two friends, Arjuna and Krishna. And therefore, if Arjuna praises Krishna and Krishna praises Arjuna, it's all good. We don't have to take it literally. Therefore, Arjuna asked Lord Krishna, please, to those who think that you only spoke and you never showed, please show them. Not for me, for them. Let a criteria be set that whoever claims to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead should at least be able to show the universal form. This was the reasoning. Arjuna had no interest to see the universal form. Uh, in your studies of the 11th chapter, you may have come across many purposes. Srila Prabhupada saying devotees are not interested in seeing the universal form. But Arjuna wanted to set this criteria that if anyone claims, okay, I am that same Krishna. Okay, if you are the same Krishna, please show your universal form. And what kind of universal form? If we have read the Mahabharata, if we are familiar with um, the storyline, We'll know Lord Krishna showed his universal form many times. He showed, just shortly before this one, he showed one to Duryodhan. Uh, the Pandavas, they were in exile. And when the exile was over, then they asked for their kingdom back. And Duryodhan said, I'm not giving you your kingdom back. I don't care. Your, your exile is over. Um, you're going to have to fight for it. And so in order to avoid the fight, the Pandavas, they sent Krishna as a messenger to Duryodhan to try and reconcile the differences, to come to some compromise, to come to some settlement. And Duryodhan, he didn't want to do that. So he decided, let me arrest Krishna and teach the Pandavas a lesson. That if you send a messenger, you know, there's a common saying in English, shoot the messenger. So that's what Duryodhan tried to do. He tried to shoot the messenger. So he was trying to arrest Lord Krishna. At that time, Lord Krishna displayed a universal form but that universal form is not the universal form spoken to in this chapter therefore a few verses before lord krishna is saying that this universal form that you have seen no one has seen before you and it's not easy to see this universal form that arjuna has seen so what was the difference between Arjuna's universal form or the, you know, Arjuna, the form the, of Krishna that he saw and Duryodhan and that form that he saw? What was the difference? Srila Prabhupada is explaining the difference for his devotional service. Duryodhan did not possess devotional service. And therefore, when Krishna displayed the universal form in front of him, not the same one, but a similar one, Duryodhan, all he could see was dazzling light and couldn't make out what's happening. And he said, oh, Krishna is up to his tricks again, trying to, you know, hoodwink us <laughs> in this situation. And therefore, Duryodhan could not appreciate Lord Krishna's universal form. Whereas Arjuna, because he has devotional service, he was able to see this universal form, which no one saw before. And he was able to appreciate it also. So therefore, Arjuna, from very beginning, although he had no interest, he wanted to establish a criteria for anyone who comes later and says, I am that same Krishna. This is the same reason why we are hearing Shri Bhagavan Uvacha in today's verse. Why not Shri Krishna Uvacha? Because someone can come along later on and say, I am Krishna. I am that same Krishna who spoke Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, we find that Vyasadeva is not using Krishna. He is using Bhagavan. He is using the Supreme. Bhagavan means one who possesses all opulence. So if someone is claiming, I am that same person who spoke the Bhagavad Gita, 
then we can say okay are you very beautiful no are you very rich no are you the richest no do you have strength no do you have renunciation no do you have fame no etc so therefore shri bhagavan is being used so there is no room for any misidentification misinterpretation that when we say bhagavan as a possessor of all opulence that refers to the supreme personality of god at lord krishna and when we say that lord krishna showed his universal form the virat rupa then anyone who's claiming to be the supreme personality of god it should also be able to show the universal form so having said that let us imagine that we are in a train and in that train there are many passengers who are running to see god in another cabin of the train there is god there who is present and all people are running there and some of the people come to you and say please go and take darshan please go and take audience of the god in the next cabin right this is actually based on a true story i will narrate the story a little bit later on but right now you are part of the story so someone comes up to you one of the devotees they come up to you running saying oh god is giving darshan god is giving darshan please go to the next cabin and take god's darshan what will be your first reaction anyone from the class it depends who is saying that one of the devotees of that god is saying please go and take darshan god is giving darshan what will be your first reaction i would run and go okay you will run and go any other devotees what what can he actually do that's what uh, what what has he proven to be a god okay you come and you see and you will see what he can do i won't believe them you will believe you won't believe or you will believe won't you will not believe them okay and then will, will the other astonish the oh how god will be uh, merciful to give this uh, darshan will be so astonished and uh, surprised yes okay so okay so let's say like pratika mata ji said and patre prabhu said you say okay god is giving darshan okay fine you've gone there you see some person sitting there and they claiming to be god and you seeing them so now what what will you do i will not believe i will not believe you will not believe okay i will so it's thousands of other krishna, devotees they paying obeisances so the must is so easy okay yeah, but krishna <laughs> doesn't give darshan just like that yeah. otherwise everybody would get darshan i well, it's not easy to have you taken krishna darshan of krishna like haven't you taken darshan i have of... but but as a human form somebody was it easy to take his darshan i would not believe okay good you will not no, believe no at the beginning was when i never realized yeah okay. i won't believe yes good based on this chapter what would you do next you see in kritika mata you said you'd run and go and now you've run and gone there and he's there this guy is saying he's god what what is your next reaction what's your next step so we will like to show your opulence show your opulence okay good yes pat prem prabhu would say please show your opulence or in other words please show your universal form right yes as arjuna surrendered to krishna you first surrender to me then i will show you my form <laughs> then what arjuna surrendered no no did he not surrender to krishna yes he did Yes. he did right so after surrendering that's when he was shown the universal form so you surrender first 
put some Dakshina, 10,000 shillings at my feet, and then I'll show you whichever universal form you want to see. Prabhuji, yeah, now this is not the right one. This is not the right one. You put 10,000 Dakshina. It's an uh, aspect of surrender, though. You <laughs> surrender your wealth. You may not surrender anything else, but first surrender your wealth, then you will see. Then what? Prabhuji, I think it depends on your bhakti. If, uh, the way you have seen Krishna um, when you are uh, in devotional service, if that is the form you see, you will uh, get attracted to him and then you will know. Because you can't just walk okay. to anybody and say that, oh, show your universal form. Hare Krishna. Yeah, yeah, okay, you he's claiming only... to be Krishna. He's claiming to be God. No, it's oh. not just Are... anybody. Can, can, can I, can I attempt God. this one, Prabhu? Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, if we if we think about uh, the source, first of all, is the source and the parampara. So we are actually going through the disciplic succession. So somebody we is coming from the parampara, like Veda Vyasa. Veda Vyasa has said, you know, and then when we fall into, then Prabhupada is the next, you know, and then the guru after that, who is following the disciplic succession? If that is coming from the disciplic succession, then we can believe that that person is actually a god. But if it's coming okay. from any other source, then you can't believe. Yes, there is a whole disciplic succession on that train. There is the first hand hand man, there is right hand man's right hand man, then the devotee who came to you, he's an acharya as well. He also said, please, this is our spiritual master. And as my spiritual master has certified that this person is god, So you can see, this is how it's not that easy, <laughs> right? So this actually happened to two devotees in India. They were sitting in a train and in India, the trains are quite long. They have many cabins and people were rushing to one particular cabin. And the devotees were wondering what's going on. There were two devotees together. And so someone said, oh, God is giving darshan in that next cabin. Please, let's go, let's go. So they, the, these devotees are wondering, okay, God is giving, very nice, let's go. They went there, they saw everyone was paying obeisances to this person. And so uh, the devotees being devotees, <laughs> they asked that person, oh, so you are God? They said, yes, yes, I am God. Oh, that's very nice. Uh, please, can you show us your universal form? And that person was a little bit apprehensive, defensive, he got, and the disciples were, hey, why are you saying like this to our God? Don't you know you respect your un disrespectful to our God? So then they said, oh, sorry, sorry. We humbly ask you, please enlighten our vision by showing your universal form. So this person was smart. So he said, oh, yes, yes. You want to see universal form? Yeah, very nice. This is how you should test God. You should ask for his universal form. It's very good. You're not blind followers. Very nice. Yes, but first you must surrender. Just like Arjuna surrendered to Krishna, you surrender to me, then I will show you any universal form you want. And what did the devotees do? They said, well, yes, Arjuna surrendered to Krishna, but that was all the way in chapter 18. When he's saying, Nashta Moha Smriti Labdha, now my illusion is dispelled and I want to surrender unto you. Right? I will do as you ask. So before he surrendered, actually, the devotees said, Lord Krishna gave Arjuna divine vision to see the universal form. So you please give us divine vision to see your universal form, then we'll surrender. Just like here we read Arjuna, he saw the universal form. Then as Kritika Madhuri was saying, uh, so many soldiers were rushing into the mouth and they were being chewed up by the Lord. And heads were being stuck in between the teeth. Right? And then Arjuna got fearful. Then what did he do? He started praying. And as Pat Prem Prabhu mentioned, that then he started saying, Oh, I was thinking you are my friend. Hey Krishna, hey Adava, hey Saketi, Anastavedam. I did not know who you are. You are so great. I offer my respectful obeisance. So, just like Krishna gave Arjuna divine vision to see universal form, 
you also give us when he was caught how do you give divine vision when you you yourself are not divine how do you give divine vision so immediately he signaled to his people that these two people are dangerous for business please chase them away <laughs> right and so the devotees had to go back to the cabin that they came from because they're bad for business you know mm-hmm. so we have to be careful the whole point of 11th chapter is you can't accept just anybody as the supreme lord that is why arjuna asked please show your universal form arjuna knew krishna is the supreme personality of god he did not need confirmation for himself but to prevent anyone else coming tomorrow and saying i am god and then they can also say like krishna said amongst the ocean amongst the bodies of water i am ocean uh, amongst the aquatics i am the crocodile amongst these i am that anyone can come and say not a big deal but he wanted krishna not just to say but also to show and krishna obliged so he set a criteria okay you want to say that you are the supreme personality of god then also show that you are the supreme personality of god by exposing your universal form by showing everyone who's involved yes they can see whatever they want to see in that form and then after that if universal form cannot be understood what to speak of the two arm form of krishna but we see krishna is so merciful that he shows the two arm form first we walk into any temple is con eldoret or is con nairobi you see krishna there he is very happily showing his two arm form and then people say oh but that's just stone and people say oh he just looks like a man how can that be god right. so therefore the two arm form of krishna can only be understood by devotees up to the point actually the bhagavatam it recommends there are people who cannot understand just like we are reading in the purport lord uh, shri prabhupada is mentioning two types of people some who say krishna is impersonal then he became personal but his original form is impersonal and then there are those who say actually krishna's personal form is an illusion he doesn't have a personal form right we read that in the purport so the bhagavatam for those who cannot picture krishna having a form those who cannot picture the supreme personality of god as having a a form those who are stuck with that mentality that yes if it's absolute if it's supreme means it is formless for them to get into the habit of thinking of krishna as having a form the virat rupa is first mentioned that okay what can you see with your eyes you can see the sky you can see the mountain you can see the trees you can see the oceans you can see the rivers so therefore these rivers are like the veins of the body of the lord these mountains are like the bones of the lord the sky represents a certain aspect you see the sun in the sky that is the eye of the lord chakshu surya ajanata chakshu surya ki the eyes of the lord are the sun and the moon so those who cannot put it in their head or those who are in a conception that the lord can have no form they are told meditate on the universal form by gradual meditation of the universal form slowly 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 then they come to understand actually the lord has a form then they can accept yes the lord's form is a two arm form and even then what we are seeing is because of the extreme mercy of the lord that he comes in a deity form and shows himself but to see face to face is not that easy for that we need devotional service and for that we need the name first so when we chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The name of the Lord and the Lord are not different. So the name will reveal the form. We want to see the two-armed form of the Lord. Even though we are seeing the deity form, we're still thinking, oh, marble. We're still thinking, oh, brass. We're still thinking wood. We're still thinking stone. We're not thinking Krishna. When we're chanting, we're not thinking Krishna. The name is not different from the Lord. So when we realize that the name and the Lord are the same, when we say Krishna, there's no difference between saying Krishna and seeing Krishna. When that day comes, then we can actually even see the two arms. Therefore, yeah, it's mentioned that even for demigods, it's very, very rare. They do not get to see the two armed form of the Lord. And even when they see the two armed form of the Lord, sometimes they make a mistake. How can that be the Lord? So, like in Krishna book, we'll read um, how Lord Brahma made a mistake identifying the Lord, how Lord Indra made a mistake thinking that how is this person the Supreme Personality of Godhead? We don't have time to explore those two topics today about how the demigods make a mistake even when they see the two-armed form of the Lord. But here, Srila Prabhupada is emphasizing that the two-armed form of the Lord is not easily understood. It can only be understood through the process of devotional service. The name of the Lord reveals the form of the Lord. right? And the reason why the universal form of the Lord was shown in this chapter is that Arjuna wanted to set a criteria that in the future, no two-armed person, just anybody can claim that they are the Lord. They actually have to show. And as Prahlad mentioned, there are three forms here. So Lord Krishna is showing that the original two-armed form is the source of all the other forms. From the two-armed form, the Lord expands into the four-armed form. From the four-armed form, he expands into the universal form. Those are technical descriptions of how every each and every expansion goes into, and um, it's not required at this point to go into those technical aspects of Krishna and his expansion. But we should know that actually what we are seeing in the temple, the two-armed form of the Lord, is extremely rare to be seen. And we have the great fortune through the mercy of Srila Prabhupada that we are able to see this form of the Lord. Now all we have to do is perfect our chanting the name of the Lord to even appreciate the form of the Lord. Then some understanding will come about the Lord. Otherwise, it is very, very difficult. Without devotional service, it is impossible to even understand the universal form of the Lord, what to speak about the other forms. So I'll leave a few minutes for questions or comments if anyone has. Thank you very much for the excellent uh, talk today. Sorry, I think I'm echoing. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, is there an, are there any questions or comments? We still have five minutes. We have not exhausted our time. So kindly unmute and ask your question. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhupada. Uh, yes, Prabhupada. Thank you very much for your nice class. Also, very much interactive today. We are getting so many questions and answers. All are alert today. Uh, Prabhupada, one thing is that uh, uh, like the demigods, like Ibrahma and Indra, they also bewildered sometimes. They don't recognize the Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. But in the scriptures, it was told when there is no right person for the Brahma, for the Brahma, and Krishna himself as a Brahma, he takes he, he uh, took charge. So how it is happened? Like he is learned, and Krishna sometimes he possesses this post. Then how he bewildered that one? Well, when Krishna is Brahma, he is not bewildered. When Brahma is a living entity, then Brahma can make mistake. The shastras they mention. When we fall into the spiritual world, we first take the post of Brahma. So at a given time, we were all Brahma. But we were not intelligent as Brahma and therefore we are here today. 
our current brahma he is very intelligent and he is a pure devotee so he is not going to come back but we were not intelligent and we were not pure devotees and therefore we are here so of course when krishna takes that post there is nothing there is no bewilderment is that okay pat prem prabhu yes prabhu right prabhu ji on the same can i ask a question since yes. there are no more questions on the chat or no one has raised their hands up um uh, prabhu ji uh, there is a, a story and i don't know whether it's true or not because we are doing mahajans with the children's class and um, uh, one of the child said that brahma uh, and shiva there was a competition and brahma cheated and actually he had five ha- uh, heads but because he cheated um, his one head was chopped off so the uh, brahma is our acharya uh, sampraday acharya so uh, it just um, made us think that um, if brahma can cheat we have the cheating propensity uh and is it from that or uh um did brahma really cheat or was it there to teach us a lesson or uh, because marjanas uh, they they teach by example so even things that you don't have to do they will um teach by an example so just clarify the doubt for you yes well you see as brahma regarding to the story maybe in some purana i am not familiar with that story uh also we have to be careful with the timelines which purana is mentioning that story in which timeline the brahma has 100 years of life and so it's not just this 100 years that we can talk about the puranas can sometimes mention of the brahma before these 100 years of brahma meaning a previous iteration of the material creation so we have to see that that's one point secondly uh brahma is a living entity living entities are prone to four defects that is the tendency to cheat number 1 tendency to make mistakes number 2 imperfect senses number 3 and to be under illusion number 4 so as living entities we have these defects now in regards to brahma he is a perfected living entity currently our brahma is a perfected living entity so if even if it seems like he is doing something untoward right or he is doing something wrong we should understand that it's not that right? it's our perception of what he is doing that we are thinking it's wrong um just like lord shiva drank poison no one in their right mind would drink poison but lord shiva did it that doesn't mean we have to imitate lord shiva because if we try to drink poison we are all going to disappear right? so the same way brahma may have done something but the difference between brahma and us is that brahma can get away by doing that something we can't so that's another point the third point is as you were mentioning that brahma to teach us that look if i am susceptible to this kind of behavior what to speak of you if me being an elevated personality i am susceptible to this kind of behavior what does it say about you so you have to be much more careful you have to be much more diligent in your devotional service is that okay Yes Prabhu I said why that is yes. and also he he um he uh, also doubted whether Krishna was really Krishna in the Brahma Viho uh, Vimohan Lila so yes. that also teaches us uh, yes. afterwards he repented so it's okay to make uh, mistakes and probably to reflect on it and repent on it maybe yes. that is what he might be teaching us yes Thank you Prabhuji. Any more questions or comments? Okay, I I know time is not on our side. We have really enjoyed the session. Uh Prabhuji, uh you please uh, give your time again every week if possible. 
I'll hand over. Yes, we'll try to arrange something. <laughs> it's a bit difficult, but we'll try to arrange something with Path Prem Prabhu. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. I'll hand over to Path Prabhuji to close the session. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your wonderful class. We are so grateful to you. Instead of your busy schedule and you are so many responsibility, but you still your willingness to giving us time. We are so grateful. Uh, already I gave the introduction of the Prabhuji. Also, thanks all the devotees who joined here in this uh, session, in the Bhagavad Gita reading session. I request everyone, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna Mantra for glorification of His grace, Sri Guranga Prabhuji. Please join. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.